Hey guys, in this tutorial, I want to teach you how to make a horror style object stuck in your wall using Blender's cloth simulation. You could do this effect in a full CG scene, but because I'm using real life footage, the first step is I need to do 3D tracking. And I already have this footage tracked in Adobe After Effects. Because we're using Blender, you can also use the Blender Tracker if you prefer using the Blender Tracker. But I personally use AE to Blend to bring the tracking data from After Effects into Blender. Now I'm going to breeze through this tracking part. I have a more in-depth tracking tutorial linked down in the video description. <music> As you can see we have the footage perfectly tracked and from here what you want to do is if you don't have a plane here already on the wall that you want to deform you want to add one there but I have one already here so I'm just gonna set it in the right place by rotating scaling up just making sure that it sits right so everything aligns well now the next thing you want to do before you add a cloth simulation is you want to go into your modifiers and add a subdivision surface, crank it up to six, and bring it to simple. And you wanna apply the modifier. So from there, we have much more geometry to work with. After that, you want to add a cloth modifier. Jump back to the beginning of the animation, and you want to select the edges of your mesh. From there, you wanna go into the object data properties, and add a vertex group, and click assign then tab out from edit mode and go into your cloth simulation scroll all the way down to shape and click on this vertex group that we created now as you can see here the cloth simulation is now sticking in place instead of falling down then i like to turn off gravity as well so we don't have any forces acting on the cloth simulation the only thing we want the cloth simulation to interact with is the object that we will be putting behind the mesh. Now this is the part in the edit where you can create an object or import an object from an online library that will be used to deform this cloth simulation. So I just found a character on Mixamo that I'd like to use for this edit. They have plenty of characters as well as animations you could choose from. It's a really great tool for VFX artists. So I'll have that link down in the video description below. And all you want to do from here is just download it unless you're using your own asset, so I'm just going to download it right now. And from here, I'm just going to import the character. If you're using your own asset, you can skip this step. All right, so here's the character. It's pretty small, so I'm going to scale it up and, bringing, and bring it closer to the cloth sim. Just make sure it lines up the right way. Scale it up some more, some more, maybe a little bit less. Right there looks good. Maybe a little bit more. I think that looks good then so I just want to rotate this guy 180 degrees so when he touches the cloth it'll be kind of getting a silhouette and protruding from there before I animate I want to make sure that I have the collision modifier applied to the object that will be interacting with the cloth as well as in the cloth settings you want to scroll down go to collisions and Make sure object collisions are enabled. And you want to start off with a higher distance number. I think 0.1 is a good start. Go back to the beginning of the simulation. And from there, you want to move your character into its starting position. So I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to the wall and add a location keyframe here. And then I want it to slowly start pushing into the cloth so from there i'm gonna move this guy up so that he will be sticking through the cloth and add another location keyframe and hopefully everything should work correctly once i hit play if there are some problems i have some troubleshooting solutions but i'm gonna just hit play and see what happens so slowly but surely all right so there we go you can see we are having some issues and he kind of just morphs through that we're kind of getting the effect that we want but not quite 
we want to give a bigger distance to the collisions so that the meshes don't intersect. So I'm just going to go into this guy and bring his thickness outer up a little bit and see what happens now after I press play slowly but surely and it looks like we're almost there. We're still having some intersections here and there. Yeah. So if you're still having issues with intersections, you want to try bringing up the object collisions a little bit more. I'm going to bring it up to point 2 as well as the quality of the collisions. I'm going to bring up to 3 and see what happens now. This may slow down the simulation, may not depending on the speed of your computer, but let's see how it turns out now. And I would say it has turned out pretty well. The one issue you could see here is that we are kind of running out of geometry on this clot simulation uh, and it's breaking a little bit. Uh, one of the workarounds is to subdivide your clot simulation a little bit more, but that takes a lot more computing power. So one great workaround for that is that the object that will be pushing into the cloth doesn't have anything that's too pointy. So I'm just going to grab this guy's armature and point his legs down so it doesn't poke into the cloth that much. And from there, we can see that the feet are pretty close to the end of the cloth. So I just want to bring this guy. I'm just going to bring this guy up through Delta Transform so we don't mess up our animation. Up a little bit more. And let's see how it turns out now. So after some troubleshooting, I changed the collision distance for the cloth and the object as well as changing some of the clot simulation settings such as tension as well as bending, quality steps. And you could play around these with these presets and see which one works best for you. So my clot simulation now is working how I intended. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. So I am just going to bake it. Just set the start and end to the entire animation length. And I'm gonna make, and I'm going to wait for it to finish baking. This might take a couple of minutes, a minute or two, depending on how strong your computer is. Okay, so here's the final simulation. As you can see, we're still having some problems here. Something I was really struggling with, but just one way to work around that is because the simulation is already baked, we can just hide the object from our scene, and we won't need to worry about it anymore. And just on top of that, I'm going to subdivide the mesh one more time so we have a little bit more smoothness in the simulation. And at this point, this glitching here is just to enhance the effect. Not really desired, but uh, I was kind of struggling with this bit. Um, you could just try using a different mesh or different uh, subdivision to not have this issue. I'm sure there's a workaround for that. But anyway, from there, you want to go into your shading tab and you want to apply a shader to your cloth simulation. Now because I'm using VFX footage, what I want to do is I want to project a video onto this cloth. So the way to do that is to add the video as a texture. I'm just going to add the video right now. Make sure auto refresh is on. And from there, we're going to camera project this texture. So I want to make sure that the UV coordinate is selected go into the modifiers tab, add a UV project modifier, select UV map to be UV map, and select your camera. And you want the aspect XY to be the resolution of the video the way you shot it. So I know I shot mine at 1080 by 1920, and now the texture should be lining up properly. And one more thing that we want to do is we want to add a simple node setup so that the texture transitions between the principled and the raw footage. So to do that, I'm just gonna duplicate this mapping and texture coordinate, switch it to object, and then add a separate XYZ node. And as you can see, we now have a gradient to work with. So I'm just gonna move it back a little bit. So we have this mask right here. Then on top of that, I wanna add a mixed shader node plug it in and connect the principled BSDF to the shader itself. And actually we want the socket here to be the principled and then we want the next socket to just be the raw video and make the factor that. And once we connect everything together, 
I just realized that the mix shader, the nodes are in the wrong position, so I'm just going to flip them. And as you can see here, we have the nodes in the right position. And if you're having this lighting issue right here, you want to add a map range in between the separate XYZ and the mix shader so we normalize the values. And then finally, to top things off, we want to add an HDRI right now. This part right here is black because it has no lighting. And I get my HDRs from Polyhaven. So I'm just going to pick one right here because I know it's a sunny day. Pick that one. And I want to rotate the HDRI so that it lines up more or less with the actual footage I shot. Matter of fact, I had these nodes in the wrong right position the first try. So what I'm going to do is switch them like I did right there. And I'm going to lower the HDRI so that it blends a little bit better with our actual footage. Then one last thing is we can see the shadows aren't quite there yet. So I'm going to go back into the world tab and change the rotation. All right. And then the one last thing I want to do is I want to change the shading a little bit more, bring down the specular, crank up the roughness. Maybe we crank up the specular a little bit more and then I want to also make a slight bump map so that it isn't just a straight image texture. So I'm going to do that right now. Maybe bring up the strength a little bit. And from there we have our finished effect. So now we're done. So I'm just going to render this footage out and slap the finished footage on top of our original footage. I'll have this project file linked in the video description. And if you're interested in more videography and VFX content, don't forget to hit subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.